Hey guys, Angela here and welcome back to Hobby Nights and day one of Warhammer Fest 2021. All right, day one is beginning with Age of Sigmar and they knew exactly how to start it off to get me really hyped for it all because they began with vampires. In fact, they started with the Soul Blight Grave Lords, which is the faction that I'm really looking forward to getting. And they showed off a brand new, spectacular looking, but also kind of weird looking vampire lord model. And it is a, let me just look at my notes real quick. It is a Varen Vengorian Lord. And okay, I love lots of things about this model, but then I have some questions about this model. And the things that I love, let's go over those first because there's a lot of really cool things. The wings look spectacular. I love the ragged like look. The one on for the female, which is a named character specifically. Um, she especially, like her sculpt looks really amazing to me. And I love all of the detail on like all of their armor. I think her base work, especially that little gargoyle that's on there. Um, I don't, I can't remember actually now if the guy had it, but like the gargoyle was spectacular. Like it looks so darn cute. And I just absolutely love that level of detail that they're putting into these. Um, I love her head, like her hair, her face, all of it. I'm just, I'm so pleased. I want to, I'm hoping they have like other heads like that for some lady vampires as I'm building my like army out and everything like that. Cause I really want to use them. The thing that is weird to me about this model is the fact that it kind of looks like they just took a big monstery wolf bat comboed creature thing, cut its head off and then stuck the torso and upper body of a vampire Lord on top of it. And for me, it's just, I think it's a little weird because I'm like, okay, there's a torso up here. There's a rib cage up there in, you know, the vampire's chest. And then there's a second rib cage beneath. And it just looks very strange to me. So I don't know overall, like how I feel about the model, like in regards to just the combo of things and how they actually put it together. Like I like all the elements that they put on it, but the combination of how they attach them together just seems a little bit weird and almost a little bit lazy. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, because I'm I'm up in the air about this one. I keep going back and forth between really loving it and really hating it. Now, we didn't just see the big boy and lady for the uh, Soul Blight uh, Grave Lords. We also saw a bunch of other models that are a little bit smaller coming out. and there's some interesting stuff about them because they kind of all look like they might have been expansions for Cursed City. And there's a lot of reasons as to why, partially because one of them is literally called Radukar the Wolf, and it's an alternate version apparently of him, um, of like him reborn. So it really sounds like they had a greater narrative that is now being just scrapped for Cursed City. And he's as evidence of this. And also they showed us, um, which his model looks really stunning, by the way. Absolutely love it. I love the sort of feral vampire look. I love this whole feral energy that they're doing across the board um, with their line right now between the orcs and what they're doing here with the vampires and everything um, with some of their designs. But they also had another model that was tied to Radikar as well. And it's a family member. I think it's his like grandmother or something like that. And she looks also really amazing like i absolutely love the model she feels absolutely like both of these characters should have been an expansion for curse city that just then got scrapped and maybe melded into the blight lord vampires um which i'm fine with on one hand but i wish they would actually address that and talk about it because if you look at the very final image that they showed for this presentation there were none 
of the models that they showed that were tied to the Curse City specifically, like the Radicar model, as well as the Radicar family member model, none of those were represented in the full image of the line. And they said that was pretty much everything that was coming out for it for the time being. And that sort of throws up red flags to me as to, you know, why aren't they there? Now they did show the dire wolves in that image, which is the other model that they showed us in this, which looked really cool. Although I'm actually not super thrilled by the dire wolves. They have so much fur on them still, but such blatant like open sores. And I don't know if it's just the paint scheme that they put on them or how they, they highlighted where the sores were or something, but it just, oddly read a little too cartoony for me and it looked it, it just i don't know it didn't look good to me so i wasn't super thrilled with the wolves i want to try them out like with a different paint scheme or something and try something a little bit more blended um to see if maybe that changes my opinion on them. but right now i wasn't super super thrilled with them now those models were shown in that final image but like i was saying none of those other radicar models were so that tells me that they were just expansions that then got scrapped because of whatever happened with Curse City, whether it's the manufacturing problem, the, sh the plastic, I think, shortage problem that there's been going on, Brexit, you know, COVID, all of these things that have delayed or caused it problems. It seems like it was really bad and they just scrapped everything going forward. And this just seems like evidence of it. That doesn't dissuade me from being very hyped for all these models. I just wish they would be upfront about why the changes were made and everything. But who knows? Let's move on to what they showed next. I was not born a god. With my mortal strength, I triumph over the weakness of my kin. For my weapons, I took the beating heart of the land and forged it anew. I took the treasure that defied the twin-headed god. I broke the bones of gods and drank deep of their power. The green ones understood. None stood before me and lived. Not beast, not drake, not their empires. All fell in dust and ruin until cowardly sorcerers snared me in a net of deception and bound me in chains beneath the mountain. Now I am free, but my people are gone. The weak remain. Next up, let's talk about the Broken Realms Kragnos book, because that is very exciting. And I have some theories about it because it's the last book for the Broken Realms, as they discussed on the live stream today. And that tells me that there might be a new edition of Age of Sigmar floating around out there coming very soon. And I know there's been speculation of that. There's some rumors that there might be an announcement of that potentially even this Saturday because of that tacked on day that they've added to Warhammer Fest. I still don't know if I fully believe that, but with the Broken Realms book being like this last one being the announced last conclusion to the book series, and it includes rules and narrative and all of that kind of stuff in the same way that Psychic Awakening did for Warhammer 40K. And I think some stuff that happened in like old world transitioning into Age of Sigmar originally, they always seem to do these sort of book series to sort of conclude editions of their games. I suspect we're gonna be seeing a new edition of Age of Sigmar, whether that is this spring, this summer, or maybe this winter. 
um, for like a seasonal release or something. I have no idea. Everything has kind of been thrown up into the air for them because of all of the scheduling changes and delays and production problems and everything that's been going on. But it's really exciting to see that there might be a new edition actually on the way. And this book seems really cool because not only is it going to be focusing on Kragnos and everything, which we'll talk about the model here in a minute, but it's also going to have updated rules for a lot of other factions, specifically focusing on the destruction faction, because that is who he's going to be leading. He is a god tier or demigod tier model for them. So it's going to have his rules, how he can fit into any of the destru uh, destruction armies, which is really cool. So like orcs can use him, goblins can use him, ogres can use him, um, your giants can use him, anything else that falls into destruction can be used by him, um, which I think is really awesome. Like I'm glad that he is a diverse mini that can be used by a lot of different things rather than just being like exclusive to a wood elf faction or a chaos faction or something like I originally had thought when they first previewed this guy coming out because he sort of looked wood elfish being a centaur-esque creature. Um, the horns really screamed wood elf to me just because they're very like bark heavy and everything like that. But no, he is destruction and going with the orcs, which is really cool that we're getting this really big orc push seemingly um, or destruction push on both the 40K side and the Age of Sigmar side. Now. Let's go ahead and discuss the actual model. God of Earthquakes has arrived and his miniature is just, oh my God. Okay, I do have one question though. They didn't put any fur near his crotch area, so where the heck is his penis? I just, I wanna know, where is it? But other than that, I love everything about this model. I think both of his face options are actually really cool. I like the sort of, um, almost cat-like or more mammal-like. I mean, I know horses and centaurs and stuff are mammals technically, but like it's more of a feline almost looking face or like it's just not traditional like looking face. And I really, really like it. I also think the open mouth option is really cool, but I also like the grimacing look. Like they did a great job. I also really enjoy the, spectac the, 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 the spectacularly spiky teeth. Um, but the thing that actually has me the most excited about this model is all of that juicy, glorious, like glorious armor. It's just, it looks so cool. I'm, I'm so, I'm so excited about it. I'm just getting super tongue tied and stumbling all over myself. So I do apologize, but like he has a bunch of fleshy bits. He has a bunch of armored bits. He has all that fur with his mane and everything. So there's lots of elements that I've really been enjoying painting right now, all smushed into one model that's really big. And if you watched today's uh, painting video, I've been really kind of on this bigger model kick between Abaddon and the snake and doing like even the, um, the uh, some of the, the the other bigger models I've done because I've completely blanked on their names. But like, I've been on this real kick the of Lehman doing- The Lehman Russ. The Lehman Russ, exactly. So like lots of big models recently and I'm I'm liking that trend in this guy really excites me to paint because I just think he's going to have like, it's just gonna be so much fun. Let me know what you guys think and what army you might be running him with. Because like I said, he's part of destruction. You can run him with any of the destruction guys. Um, and I think they gave us a little bit of stats on his, um, like a little bit of his stats, actually. I think he's got a two up save that I remember that I'm discussing. And I think he has an 18 plus wound. So he's, he's gonna be a chonky boy, really like, really good. So tell me how you're gonna use him. Tell me how you wanna paint him and whether or not you're gonna be picking him up because I definitely will be. Charadoch Festus, worlds of mankind, rhyming 
beneath thy touch. The Iron Planet stands alone, and it too shall trust. My victory is nigh. For the Corpse Emperor rallies his finest, and they will be found wanting. All shall become rot and despair. Decay comes for all. As is Nurgle's way. And when the night is darkest and the shadows unfurl, I will take what is mine? First up, the Book of Fire. The next book in the Warzone Cheridon line of rules that they're coming out with that continues to follow Typhus as he tries to conquer Metallicus and that whole section of the Imperium for Nurgle and himself and, you know, all of that good chaosness. And it's a pretty interesting book. Um, we have the thing that actually had me the most interested in this particular book is the fact that it's going to have the rules for Bellacor running him in 40k, which is awesome. Um, but in addition to that, there is going to be what is called the Legion of Shadow, which is going to be a specific army build based around Bellacor that allows you to combine chaos demons and chaos space marines, which is really cool because you don't have a lot of opportunity to do that right now. And I'm really excited to see what this is. Now, they're all going to be under Bellacor's banner, so I think he has to be the Warlord in order to run this Legion. But with him, you're going to be able to get like a bunch of new um, specific Warlord traits, some, I think, um, specific things for uh, uh, spending CP on stratagems. I couldn't remember that word for a second. So there's going to be a lot of stuff focused on that army in there, and that seems really awesome, especially if you're a big chaos player, and I certainly have plenty of chaos demons and plenty of chaos space marines laying around. So this gives me an opportunity to do something cool with them. And I did pick up Bellacor. I was lucky enough to get a hold of one. So I could build this Legion and I'm very excited for it. But not only is that uh, the only, that's not the only thing that's gonna be in this book. There's also gonna be rules for the sisters. Um, there's gonna be rules for chaos space marines. And of course, there's gonna be some more rules for Admech, um, which is all very exciting as well. Not only did they announce the book, which was a little bit awkward because they actually moved past talking about um, the Warzone Charidon before actually talking about the terrain set that's supposed to go with it, but they wrapped back to it and we're getting a brand new terrain set to go with it. It seems pretty neat, honestly. I, I'm, I'm really tired of Imperium terrain still. Like, there are some cool pieces in this set. I especially like the. Um, plasma generator thing that seems to attach to all the pipes, which seem unnecessary because, my God, we all have tons and tons of pipes already from all the other terrain sets that they've made. But so there's some cool elements in it. But overall, it's still just another Imperial set. Um, and I want to see more Xeno or Chaos or like just something that's not just the Imperium of Man, because I think that'd be a little bit more interesting. And especially since we're sort of pushing, you know, the Death Guard and Chaos with this book set, um, it'd be cool to see terrain for that, like maybe something to go along with Bellacor to tie that his base into maybe some terrain features on the table or something. That would be a lot cooler to me. But let me know what you thought about the reveal down in the comments below. Hey guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know about it down in the comments. If you haven't already and you're wanting more content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications. And then if you want even more hobby goodness, make sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at hobby underscore night. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the video. God Emperor, hear my prayer. As our worlds burn and our faith is tested, give us your strength. As our bodies break and our people falter, give us your fury. As our enemies fall and their works are cast down, give them your mercy. 
for they shall not have fun! Are you ready for the representative of the High Lords of Terra in Morven Val, the High Abbess? She is pretty cool. I, I will admit, I, I love the idea of this model running with the Paragon War suits that we had already seen and they did talk about more in this preview. I love the idea of her running with them, leading them and everything, but like, I'm, I'm not sure if I like, feel the High Lord title is justified with this miniature. Like, don't get me wrong. She's definitely way more ornate than the other models that we've seen of this style with the Paragon war suits and everything. She's got a lot more inlaid detail work. Um, she's got the candles on her shoulders and everything. It's really, it's like a really stunning model. But I just, I just don't know if I fully feel like she's High Lord of Terra title worthy. I, that being said, I'm excited to like get my hands on her because I just want to, I want one, I want to see how she builds. I like the sphere. I like the little touch of it being from a custodes. It also explains the excessively ornate gold armor, unlike say what the Paragon war suits actually have because they're trying to differentiate that and make her feel more elaborate and a little bit more like she's directly from Terra being a high lord. So I like, I get those elements. I just wish they had actually like pushed it more because right now she feels very subdued in comparison to say, some of the ornateness of, I mean, heck, even the banner that they showed us again, like it just doesn't quite feel on the same level as some of the ornamentation that we've seen on some of the other sisters models. And considering she's their like leader, you would think that she should be a little bit more grand. Like, I don't know what I would do specifically to add that. I, sorry, I keep looking down at her model. That's why I'm glancing at my phone. Um, but like, I just, I don't know what I would do but I feel like there's something more that's needed. Now, that's not the only new model that we got. We got a look at one other additional sister model that's coming out and it's gonna be paired with um, Astrid, who is the banner lady that we saw previously. This is going to be a smaller character that has just an inquisitive eye, um, like sort of stave that, and they're going to come as a set. So this, it's probably going to be like that, um, Sisters and Harlequin set that came out a while ago. It's gonna be one of those kind of special edition sets that they do, which is pretty neat. And again, that banner looks rad. Now, the only other new thing that Games Workshop actually revealed on this uh, 40 minutes live stream that they did was the Sister of Battle Codex, which is very, very cool. Like I was expecting that. Um, I was actually expecting the Sister Codex on this day, as opposed to the second day of Warhammer 40K. So nailed it on the head, totally called it. But I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed. Um, I, I like the fact that we are getting the new Sister book. Um, that is fantastic news because I wanted it. I like the news that the Miracle Dice have been tweaked and they don't function fully the same way because personally, while I liked that addition of a rule because it made them unique and kind of interesting, I didn't fully enjoy the mechanic itself, so I'm very curious to see how this book is different, what exactly they've changed, and what they've added in, because they've added in a lot more abilities for not specifically psychic or anything like that, but like doing um, sort of like what chaplains do for Space Marines, where they can do, um, I can't remember the word, chants or something like that. Um, litanies. Litanies, yes, litanies and stuff, so that they can like bless the sisters and give them buffs and that kind of thing. So there's gonna be a bunch of new stuff in the book, as well as you know stuff we're all very familiar with and still love, but that's all they did. They that's all they revealed, and I just I don't know. I don't know if it really felt it because then they spent a bunch of time going over a bunch of the sisters' models that we'd already seen, which I mean it's great to see them again. I love looking at the Paragon war suits. I like seeing the banner chick. I like seeing. Um, oh, they did talk actually about the one other thing that they did 
have that was at least not new, but additional information is for the halberd lady, who the Sanctorum, I believe it was, or Saint, I wrote it down, um, uh, Sacronids. They are going to have two different builds. You're either going to be able to do the halberd, which I think personally is just my preferred look. We'll have to see what the actual uh, rules for the two weapons are and how they actually function. But you can also do a large mace build, which is really cool. And so they showed those models off as well. But other than that, they showed like three new models, one of which we had already seen sort of already because it's just the variation on a kit. And then one which was a single model that goes with another thing and then our, our High Lord of Terra, which she's cool. But I just, I don't know, it felt very lackluster, this final segment for the Warhammer 40K for day two. Because in Age of Sigmar, what ended up happening is they ended up showing a bunch of new things. Like they tried not to show too much that we hadn't already seen. Like they did dip back into a little bit of stuff with some of the Slanesh models and the Wood Elf model that we had seen already, but they at least tied it in to um, Kragnos' like, lore and stuff, and that's why they sort of brought it up. But this time, they really didn't seem to have a whole lot to talk about, and I find that interesting considering they're stretching the 40K day into two parts. I know, obviously, we're... I mean, I don't actually know this because I don't think it's been revealed or anything, but I think it's pretty obvious that we're going to get orcs on the next day for 40K. And that's great. I'm actually very excited for that because that should be a bunch of new models. We've seen very little of the Beast Snaga orc faction, so I'm expecting a whole lot of that on the next, um, on day four or day five. I can't remember which now. But it just seems very weird that they spent this entire segment talking about a bu mostly stuff that we already knew or books, which are very cool, but like until fans can actually get their hands on them, just seeing the covers is kind of irrelevant and doesn't really feel super special or exciting or worthy of a live stream event. Now, I know this is in supplement of a con, and so of course they would be talking about these kinds of things anyways as part of press releases. It just, I don't know, it felt a little lackluster to me. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below of this day's reveals, because I just, I'm not fully sure how I'm feeling it. Um, yeah, I just, let me know what you think. And they started us off with a bang by showing off some miniatures, which honestly I think is a good call considering the uh, reception of yesterday's video. But let's talk about what they showed because it's Gaunt's Ghosts and they look spectacular. It's great to see some new plastic miniatures for the guard, especially for some troop choices, although there is the commissar and everything in there. So they're all they're all characters actually technically, but they looked amazing. Chat was exploding and really excited as they were previewing them. And I can't wait to see them like in stores and everything because they look really, really cool. And honestly, excite me for Kill Team because like I think these characters that they keep bringing out from the books are a fantastic opportunity for GW to insert some life back into Kill Team. And Gaunt's Ghost would be a great way to start it. So I hope that they have some data sheets for that game system simply because like 
I don't know, I just think it'd be a fun way to run them because they're named characters. You want to really focus on them and Kill Team really allows you to do that. And I think people really have this like idea of running some of these known named characters in that. So I just, I don't know, I think it would be really cool, but let's talk about like the actual miniatures themselves because we have a lot of different sculpts and I have a couple of favorites. So I, in particular, really like the Colonel. Um, I really like just like the beard and just the long hair. I just think he's really cool looking. Um, I absolutely adore uh, the Sergeant, um, uh, the Sergeant uh, Scout. He, I think, just has a really cool pose. I don't, his face, I just really enjoy. Um, these guys' color palette also, I just, uh, fantastic. I know it's it's green with like the black and then some red in there, which is fairly classic, but like the paint job that the team did for these miniatures for this reveal is just spectacular and has really, really extra sold me on them. Um, and I just think it's really, really cool. And then the other one that I really like is, um, let me look it up because I don't remember which one it is. Oh, it's the major. Um, so he's also really cool. Like I just, again, he has a really cool head shape. Um, I like the way that he's holding the dagger and everything. Like the whole team though is fantastic. And it was a great way to start off what they were going to be showing us because they are focusing pretty heavily on some Imperial Guard with the books that are coming out from Black Library. So let's get to those next. Today, crab battle. They start us off with Underworld's Dire Chasm, the last and final set for that particular season. And it is a doozy. We are getting Elethane's Soul Raid, which is pre, we kind of knew were coming because we knew there were going to be some sea elves, but we had no idea what they were going to be. And I think they're absolutely stunning. The chat absolutely freaked the heck out over the giant crab. Crab battle! Crab battle! because I mean like it's a giant crab and it's amazing. Um, I immediately wanted to take and convert a tiny Silostra to put on top of it because if any of you guys have played Total War Warhammer 2 and you have the Undead Pirates expansion, she has um, a mount later on that is a giant crab. Um, it's not quite that style of crab, but it just, it reminded me of it. It made me really happy. It made me really, really want to see some like pirate models in Age of Sigmar or something like that down the line for maybe some undead guys because I just think that'd be really cool. But the sea elves were fantastic. I'm absolutely going to be getting this kit. I am a little bit sad that it's the final one for the season. Obviously, I think Underworlds has been very successful for Games Workshop, so I definitely think they're going to continue it. And I just don't know how long it's going to be between seasons because I don't actually remember what the length of time was between um, Dire Chasm and Beast Grave. I believe it was previously. So I'm a little sad that it's ending, but this next set is going to be very cool. Plus there's a couple that still aren't out because I don't believe the Orc set is actually released yet. So we still got some stuff coming and I'm very hyped for it all. Let me know what you guys thought of this particular set because I really, really like, so for the, for the Underworld set for the Crimson Court, I used, I did a painting video on it and I used some red metallic paints. Well, that whole set that Army Painter has for those red metallics comes with some blues and purples. And the Sea Elves, really, I really wanna use some of those colors on them and do something neat with the armor. So I'm really excited for that. I'm, look forward to that for a, a potential video later on down the line. But let me know what you thought of the final uh, Dire World or Dire Chasm Underworld set.
Next up, we're going to Necromunda, where we got a look at the next house that's coming, and it's House of Shadows. And these guys look really, really cool. I love all of these models. I love the cybernetic snake thing that they have. Um, I think it actually has a specific name. Let me see if I can find the image. Yeah, this um, psychocentric or psych psychotetric worm psychotetric worm it's so cool so there's a model like a tiny little one of that which i always really love when they do these like the little small sort of additional pieces that you can bring into the game that are like either animal companions or uh mechanized companions or whatever so that's really cool plus there's a figure that's actually carrying one which is terrifying because i think that they use these to like I assume get information because these guys are designed to be like spy masters and assassins to a small extent, depending on like which version of them that you're running. But the piece that actually had me the most hyped for this particular set, because I definitely think it is up there as one of my favorites for what we've seen from Necrom Necromunda so far, was the Psychian Spectre. That thing is super, super cool. And the thing that actually like made me go, ooh, how exciting was when they were talking about it on the live stream, it's actually a design that they pulled from original Rogue Trader, which I always love when Games, Work Games Workshop goes and dips back into some of their older lore and everything and brings it back into the new models um, and you know lets it be as part of the actual modern lore and representation. So seeing that is really cool. It's really dynamic and of all of the more recent models from the box games that were specifically tied to 40k. Um, I actually think that this particular set is the most dynamic of the ones that they've done so far. And that's really neat because they've been doing a lot of really cool dynamic things with the Age of Sigmar line, but I feel like we haven't fully seen that translated into 40k yet. We've seen it a little bit with like the Necrons because there's been some like, there's that one, um, Necron character that is like ripping like blood out of a corpse or whatever. And so there's some cool like fluid dynamics happening there and some great motion. Um, but we see a lot more of that in AOS than we do 40k. And so it's nice to see some of that really starting to come into 40k through these models. And I hope we continue to see that diversification. But this whole set looks really cool. And I think like between these guys, the um, fire guys, and then the um, I think it's the House of Water or the Clan Clan Water, I can't remember. Those, I think, are my three favorites, just in regards to like some of the diverse minis that the lines have. Now, I'm really hoping that all this Necromunda stuff and that new starter set ends up being really cool because I would love to get into this game. And this particular faction, and like I said, a couple other ones really excite me. So I'm definitely probably going to be picking some of them up. Let me know what's your favorite house and if these guys interest you at all for playing the game. And last but not least, they teased us with a plastic Thunderhawk kit, which I really just don't think they're actually ever going to do at the proper scale that we all want it to be, but it's cool that it's coming to Aeronautica Imperialis. And there's a new starter set coming to it as well. And that has me actually very excited because Aeronautica is one of those games where I've always kind of been slightly interested because I do actually think the models are kind of interesting, um, but I never really, I've just never really cared super a lot about skirmish games with like dog fighting specifically. Now I know this is GW trying to compete with stuff like um, X-Wing and uh, Wings of War, I believe it is, um, and everything like that, which do do these dog fighting style games. But this new starter set that comes with Eldari and Space Marines really, really looks cool. The Space Marines I'm not as interested in, but the Eldari ships look so cool. Like, I actually wish there was a way to be able to get, um, like, to mix the box sets instead of getting 
the way that they have them where they just have like, okay, this set is this one. Um, I think the previous set was um, Tau and I don't remember actually what it was. And then the first, orcs. was it Orcs? Okay, so the Tau orcs and- Orcs were in the first. Yeah, Orcs were in the first one. So Orcs and Imperial Guard, I believe were in the first one. I don't remember who came with the Tau, um, but there was a box set I think for that. And then they've done this one, which is Space Marines and Eldari. And I wish that they, you could like mix and match them or do like made orders so that you could pick which of the two starter sets you wanted to get. That is like a pipe dream. Obviously, they're never going to do that, but it'd be a really cool thing to do because honestly, I want the Imperial Guard and then the Eldari. I think that would be a really cool combo because I just also feel like those models actually look like they can fly. My biggest complaint with like the Space Marine ones, despite how cool they look and the, despite the fact that they like really, really teased us with that uh, Thunderhawk trailer and everything, because I think people really bought into it of, oh my God, we're going to get one. It's like, no, we're talking about box games. It's going to be for Aeronautica, but it's very cool that that's happening as a separate thing, by the way. It's not something that you get in the starter set. But I think it's really cool that you have these two starter sets, and I've sort of lost my train of thought a little bit. Sorry about that. But overall, it's really awesome. I'm interested in the game a little bit with this, or at least picking up some of these models to paint, because honestly, painting those small scale uh, vehicles sounds like a lot of fun. The one thing I will say is I wish, I really, really wish if they want to keep focusing on these um, ship combat games and everything, I hope that one day that means they eventually bring back Blackstone Fortress, or not Blackstone Fortress, sorry, um, Battlefleet Gothic. Uh, I looked at a Blackstone Fortress model off on, on my counter and then I was like, changed it. But I want them to bring back Battlefleet Gothic because one, the miniatures in that were really, really cool. They've never really done, I don't think they've ever done plastic models for it. They were only resin and metal and the resin ones are incredibly delicate and just, the spires break off of them all the time, but I feel like people absolutely love those models and the game was pretty successful. Like the video game that they did for um, Battlefield Gothic is pretty successful and everything. So I really wish that they had like brought that back um, when they had announced the game originally and stuff, but we'll see how it goes in the future. Uh, let me know if you're interested in playing Imperial, uh, Anotic Aeronautica Imperialis, stumbling all over my words now because it's been a long day. Let me know if you play it, what faction you're playing, and whether or not you're going to pick up this new starter set. Ork, 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 Right, lads. This is the plan. And it's proper cunning and walky. Them beaky gits is right nearby. So they's expecting us boys to charge right at them. That's what we's gonna do, cause we's orcs, but we's gonna do it from the side. They never expect the boys to come from the side, see? All we need to do is creep up right close by hiding and stuff. Hiding. That's Grot's business. We don't do no hiding. That way's stupid. I got a better one. Right. We got lots of boys and lots of trucks. There ain't enough beakies to kill us all. So I say we go straight out and hit them hard. That's the proper walkie way. Lots of choppers, lots of tucker. Lots of war! Nah, you listen up. We's the beast savers. And we don't care if you sneak around like walkers or charge in like gawkers. We're only here for one thing. And that's sticking the biggest gits. The chumpiest monsters and the hardest gloomy stompers! <laughs> We're getting some beast snagger orcs, as well as a brand new orc codex. But let's go ahead and talk about those gosh darn 
amazing miniatures and the box set that they're coming in because it's limited, which means it's gonna be difficult to get our hands on. It means it's unfortunately probably going to be roughly how the um, Adeptus Sororitas box ended up being, where it was a little bit difficult to get people's hands on them for as many people that wanted it. So we'll be seeing what's going on with that. Now, that being said, GW has already stated that everything in this box is going to be sold separately at a later date. It's just that this box is going to be the launch of the new Orc Codex, which had people super hyped. And in this box, we're getting a bunch of those new Beast Snaga Orcs, and they can fit in with any of the other Orc factions. They made that very clear, stated it several times, um, not only between the hosts, but also like the interview that they did. It was just said a lot. So don't worry if you've got your, you know, Gloom Blitz or your uh, Speed Freaks or, you know, whoever else that you want to run, you can fit these guys right in, or you can just run them as pure Beast Snaga, which is honestly kind of how I'm at least leaning right now because I just really, really like the look of these new models. And there's a lot of really cool stuff that's coming in this box. I'm gonna start start by talking about the one guy that is a little bit of a confusing model to be included, but incredibly cool that he's in there. We've got Zorgod Wartsnaga, which is an older miniature that we haven't actually seen in a really long time that is being in, included in this box. And he is a, um, um, oh, what are they called now? I've completely blanked grunt on the name. Herder. Grunt herder. Runt herder. Or runt, runt herder, sorry. They, he's a runt herder and there are no runts in this box set. So it's a little bit weird that he's included in it, but regardless, I absolutely love his model. I especially like the fact that he has the hair squigs like stapled to both his chin for a beard as well as his head for just normal hair. And I really, really, really hope that in the new book, there is like a hair squig like relic or something because I just think that would be super fantastic, really on theme. Like it just, it would be amazing. I, I really, really hope that that is a thing that happens. But this model is glorious. I definitely want to be painting him. Um, it's definitely my favorite, I think, of all of the individual characters um, and just specifically the orcs in this particular set. But we also got a look at a knob on a Smasher Squig, which I, or Smasha Squig, sorry. And it looks so cool. I really, I don't remember what the name of that particular type of dinosaur that like, I think in old cartoons would often like headbutt stuff, but it reminds me of that and I absolutely love it. Um, I really like how regal the orc riding the squig looks, like that knob looks amazing. Um, I do find it a little bit interesting and I am curious to hear what other more seasoned orc players have to say about this, but a lot of these beast snaga orcs seem to be a lot more like upright than some of the other orcs. Like I thought orcs were always more like hunched and stuff like they were, they never really stood up fully straight. Um, but these guys seem to really be standing up a lot more straight, which has made them like, I don't know, I mean, it makes them look more powerful and like bigger and bolder and everything like that. So I guess that's the aesthetic they're going for. But I'm kind of curious to see how the fans feel about it, because I know that's sort of an aesthetic choice that people really used to like about the orcs. Not only are we getting those two cool, like, you know, character models and everything, there's a bunch of new boys in this, which are looking amazing. But the thing that really has me excited are, are all of those riders and the tiny squig that has back legs that I don't even actually think it has leg legs. I think it just has the wheel. So it is a freaking unicycle squig with bombs strapped to it's it. It's a unisquig. It's a unisquig with a Gretchen riding it, who has got a big rusty nail and he is just charging forward with those big boys. He's gonna explode somebody and it's gonna be amazing. I need like 30 of them. I just want a little army of just that model with some, maybe some variations, all like Kip Bash or whatever, but like it would be so cute. Um, but I'm just, I'm so hyped for these orcs. I can't wait to find out when they're actually going to be arriving because of course GW didn't give us any dates for anything that they've announced so far. But I'm hoping that I assume I assume that we'll basically be seeing them post the ad mech codex coming out as well as maybe the sister of battle. I could potentially see them maybe releasing the sister of battle codex at the same time as this orc box because they're not actually 
going to be releasing the full codex or any of the individual boxes for the orcs for a little bit while after they've, you know, it's the same, like I said, it's the same thing that happened with a Sisters of Battle box, right? They announced that first, it was out for like a month or two, and then they started releasing everything. And I'm wondering if that means that this box will have a simultaneous release with something else, or if it's actually going to be a separate individual release. We'll see going forward. Their schedule is still like super up in the air, so who the heck knows? But I have really enjoyed looking at these orcs. Now let's talk about some of the things that they like to smash. And I got so distracted by that unicycle squig that I forgot to talk, to talk about the War Boss and Mega Armor because he also got announced and he looks freaking rad. Like, okay, I really like the Beast Nagas, but I do appreciate a heavily armored orc. And this guy is incredibly heavy armored. I love the like two-handed like choppa that he has. Um, it looks stunning. Uh, and I also really, really enjoy the Gretchen on top of him that is like mounted with the gun for his Daka because of course, you know, he's a war boss, so he needs both, um, but he doesn't have to worry about the gun. He can just work on, you know, chopping people because that's what he's best at. And this kit looks really exciting. I'm very hyped for it. Now, let's actually talk about what they like to chop. Well now, that is quite an interesting little trailer that they showed us there at the end. It looks like we're going to be getting a new battle box and it looks like it's going to include Grey Knights and Thousand Suns or possibly Zinch, but it looks like it's definitely Thousand Suns because I'm pretty sure I saw some uh, uh, Space Marines in there that were from that Legion. So I'm really, really excited for this because Thousand Suns are, I'm, I'm a big fan of Egypt. Um, and I really like the idea of the Thousand Suns, but I haven't wanted to actually start that army because I've got one, I've got my Death Guard and I really love them. Um, but I also kind of want to see what they were going to do for like either new models or what the new rules were possibly looking like for ninth edition. So the fact that they're in this box makes me very hyped because I'm like, ooh, does that mean that like later this year, like maybe the end of the year? Cause let's be perfectly realistic here. I do not actually expect to see this Grey Knight and Thousand Sun box for some time now because it's they've got so many other things lined up right now and things have been delayed. I just don't expect it until like probably the holiday season. But if that's true, that is going to be a really exciting holiday season for me because I think the Thousand Suns are gonna be awesome. I really, really wanna see them come back. And I know people have been waiting for some word on some Grey Knights and the fact that they're in this kit makes me really hopeful for those players because like I assume we'll probably get some new models in this kit. They normally tend to release at least something new within these battle boxes that they tend to do, um, especially if they're going to be like holiday releases and stuff. So I'm really, really hoping I'm like, I'm, I'm really excited for this box. I can't wait to see more. I don't actually expect to be able to find out more though for quite some time because that's kind of GW's jam sometimes. So we'll see what happens. Let me know how hyped you might be for it down in the comments. Three brave soldiers went to the bog. One disappeared right into the fog. Two brave soldiers went to the mire. One disappeared from around the fire. One brave soldier went to the Fen. None of the soldiers were heard of again. And the big reveal for Saturday is Age of Sigmar 3rd Edition, which 
Honestly, I, I mean, we kind of knew that was coming, so it doesn't really feel like that big of an announcement. Um, I mean, it's really cool that they've officially said it, like, hey, yes, it's on its way. And we even know sort of, kind of, what maybe be what might be coming in the box. So they showed us a short trailer, which I thought was pretty cool. I liked the um, City of Sigmar, um, City of Sigmar like characters having the story and everything, and then being surrounded by the beasts, which is the focus of this next Age of Sigmar edition. They're really gonna be focusing on the realm of the beasts and focusing on destruction, which is really cool and kind of expected. With the announcement of the Broken Realms Kragnos book and him coming out as being a god for the Beastmen, or not the Beastmen, sorry, the, um, the, the destruction folks and everything, it definitely, I'm not surprised by this announcement and everything. I originally, when I first saw the trailer, when it was like going through and everything, I actually thought initially it might have been leaning towards the vampires being in there because the tone that they chose to like narrate the piece in and then some of the imagery still felt a little bit, um, still vampire-y to me, but it's really cool that they're focusing on the destruction and beasts and everything. Now, along with this new box set, we also got a couple of miniatures revealed and one of them is a stunning, new character model for the Sigmarines, and her name is Yinstrad the Celestial Spear, and she is absolutely just gorgeous. I love the way those wings look. It doesn't help that they painted them in this really just like pale, like blue gray to light blue, um, like just color scheme, and it just goes with the sort of silvery goldish armor that they've been doing, which I've really, really been um, focused on this like gold silver mix for my metallic hues recently. So I'm really gravitating toward this model a lot. She definitely could be, I think, a great conversion for Sanguinius. A lot of people in chat were like exploding about that and being like, oh my God, we're gonna use her, use her as Sanguinius and everything. And I think that's totally doable. I think you just have to remove a couple pieces and it would easily very much work. Um, and it'd be nice to have a plastic Sanguinius conversion to be able to work with and everything. I also think it's really funny that they just, I feel like, I feel like she is a little bit of them just taking like Celestine or that type of character and just like plopping them into Age of Sigmar. Um, but it's gonna be interesting to see what they're doing with all of this because the Sigmarines are getting some upgrades as well because some stuff is going on with them and it's all tied into this new edition. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other models that they showed. We also got the announcement of the Stormcast Eternals Vindic... Vindic... Vindicator... <sighs> They're basically Primaris Stormcast, okay? Basically, everything is getting Primaris. The Orcs have gotten it. The Space Marines obviously got it. And now the Sigmarines are getting it. What about the Chaos Marines? You know what? God damn it. I know, like where are our two wound chaos Marines, GW? Just where are they? Um, but these models are pretty neat. The Vindicator um, is the least of the ones that I'm excited about. Although I will say when they were talking about this particular model, cause they, they stood on like one image of him just like standing there in the classic color scheme and everything for a really long time. And he's, it's not, I mean, it's a cool model, but it's not that exciting. It's just a guy holding a spear, um, but when they switched to some other schemes and every or uh, some other pictures, they showed some other color schemes. And I actually have not seen, I don't, I've not actually seen that many like Age of Sigmar players in the wild actually in real life. Um, the store that I play at doesn't have a huge amount of them or at least not that I've seen playing. Um, so I've actually not seen very many alternate like color schemes for these particular models. I almost only ever see the classic GW, you know, suggested color scheme. Um, and so seeing some other designs was really rad. I wanna see so much more of that. I love seeing people explore doing different stuff with their models and doing different paint schemes that are just non-traditional or whatever. So I was really excited to see that, um, especially since these models like overall were not super, super thrilling to look at. Now, the one that I was, a lot more excited about is the Stormcast Eternals Annihilator. He 
looks so cool. Um, I, I just, I love the big chonky armor. He's essentially going to be a Stormcast Eternal Terminator because um, he's going to have, I think, a two-up save they mentioned. Um, I mean, he's got basically a Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield. If you look at him, I mean, they don't call it that. It's called something else, of course. But it literally has lightning bolts on it. It really does. I mean, I know that they are lightning Thunder, hammer, thunder, like, but it's a thunder. It's 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 the same thing. They are they are just terminators, and it looks really cool. I would love to be able to use these as like a conversion for like, I don't know, honestly, dark angels or something, because I feel like with the lion symbology, it would go with that. So I don't know. It'd be really cool. I can't wait to see some of these new Sigmarine models come out because I know it's been a while for those players since they've actually had some releases. That being said, I feel like this release announcement day was fairly lackluster because we got essentially three models, um, two of which were some cool new troops and everything, but it wasn't like super thrilling. The character is gorgeous, but they've given us like one big character each day, which has been fine. But I don't know. I just feel like Warhammer Fest could have been done in two days over like two two hour periods. Um, I just feel like there wasn't that much that they actually had to talk about that actually made spending all this time on it like super worth it. Like the best thing honestly about it for this whole event for me personally was not so much watching the reveals because most of what they had, I kind of anticipated being a reveal anyways. It was actually just being able to do the news each week and then talk with you guys in the comments and like on Instagram and Twitter and all of those places, all the social media places that I am and just talk about the reveals, see what's going on, like what your guys' thoughts on them were, what your plans for some of the models were. Like that has been the best part for me. And I wish that like, they talked a lot about community in these, uh, these presentations and everything and about how they were really excited about being able to share Warhammer Fest with a much broader audience that they normally wouldn't be able to because of the fact that it's normally a convention. And so like you're limited to like room size capacities and everything like that. And even barring, you know, COVID issues, there's, you're still only so many people you can fit into a room, right? So they really enjoyed seemingly being able to do this despite I assume the aggression sometimes that chat through at them, which is, you know, hit or miss or whatever. But like, it just feels weird that they didn't try to focus it better and make it feel a little bit more worthwhile because right now, to me, it just feels like it kind of was a waste of people's time to spend like an hour of each day doing this when it could have just been done in like a day or two. Now, that being said, I still had a blast with it. Like there were, were some very cool models. There are some things that I'm very excited to see come out. It's nice to have some confirmations of a couple of things being next in line for like releases and everything. I really wish at one point they would give us like actual release dates during these types of things. I know that they never will. I am fully aware that they never will, but one day it would be nice. Um, oh, and then the one other thing that I wanted to definitely mention that they talked about is there will be two other preview days like this that will only be a single day. I think it's going to be like their Saturday normal stuff that they do um, in the month of May because they have some additional announcements coming. I'm going to be very curious to see what those actually end up being because I felt, like I said, that this was very lackluster overall. It was stretched way too thin and I'm curious if like whatever reveals that they have coming down the line in, the ne in this next month, if they had just added it to these days, would it have made it feel better? Like, would it have made people maybe like less upset about not getting some of the things that they had maybe expected or had wanted to be addressed? Um, who knows? But it's been an interesting ride. The one other thing that I will say about today's event um, is the fact that they and I didn't expect them to. I just want to be very clear. I did not expect them to address Curse City, but they did not actually touch on it at all. Um, and that is a little bit of a shame. Of a shame. I kind of had hoped that maybe they would. And there were a couple of points when they kind of got like a little bit more like somber and everything where they may have seemed like they were going to talk about it, but they never did. And I really wish that they had. But it is what it is. It was a great event. There were some great new minis. I'm especially looking forward to those orcs because they look spectacular. Speaking of orcs, 
There were a couple of announcements outside of Warhammer Fest that I want to cover real quick, and one of them is a brand new Pain Boss, and he looks awesome. Like, so, okay, the helmet is great. I love the way that his face looks. I don't actually understand how he sees anything to be able to do, you know, surgery and work on his boys, but, you know, I'm not going to question that. I'm just going to assume that through orc logic and finesse, it works. He also has like a bunch of like little squig bits all over the place, which is great. I just think, especially the one that sort of functions as a um, IV or whatever, like I, I just, I love it. It's a great little, just like add on little detail that just adds some flavor, which is fantastic. Plus I also really dig the fact that he's got the mechanical sort of like animalistic legs. Um, I imagine he can like jump really well. And this continues to just prove to me that these orcs feel very themed after like, um, oh my gosh, what is that game uh, with the redheaded chick? Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn, exactly. Like these guys feel so Horizon Zero Dawn to me. And I absolutely love that. Um, it's partially the white paint scheme with the red, but not only are we getting the pain boss, he's going to be coming with a little assistant who is also got a like uniwheel leg like mechanic, like the uh, squig that we saw earlier in Warhammer Fest. And I just love this design. It is so darn cute. It is really on point for the orcs. I feel like I'm, I feel like this is not specifically new for them, but I feel like it's been a while since we've seen an emphasis on this particular aspect of their design elements. And I'm really digging that they're bringing it back. It, there's just a lot of stuff going on with the Orc line right now that I'm absolutely loving. And I just, I really want to get this set and pick up that other big box set and everything. And I really just like, oh, do you think if I paint the, like the little Gretchen red, I think it'll go faster. And finally, the last thing that we had announced this week is the STC line of synthetic brushes that honestly, I absolutely hate. Like I am not looking forward to these brushes at all. I, I don't like white bristled brushes because they immediately get stained. It doesn't matter how much you clean them, especially if you use like reds or like purples or greens or blues or basically all of the colors that I like to use the most, like those colors are going to stain these bristles. And I just, I just don't like it. Like it's Angela, good. You can use brush shampoo to clean them. Yes. And I'm sure that will do an okay job, but like normal bristles get stained. Synthetic ones are going to get stained worse. So like, it's great that they have this new line coming out. They just, they are really, really focused on the fact that they're white bristled brushes on the article. And I'm like, I don't understand why you're making such a big deal about this. I don't know a single person that likes having pale bristled brushes because of the staining problem, because it always makes your brushes feel dirty. And I use contrast paint. So I'm like really worried that this is just going to get like, that are just going to be destroyed immediately. So I'm probably going to pick some up to still test them because I'm a masochist like that. And I, I like to cause myself pain, but like, I just, I'm really not thrilled by them. Let me know what you guys think. How are you feeling about them? I know some people really dislike th synthetic brushes, just like as a whole people, some people are just very, uh, you know, aversive to them and everything. I'm not one of those people, but I still just really don't like the look of these brushes. Like, again, tell me what you're thinking about them. Are you going to be using them? I'm at least going to try them out, but I just, I'm not holding out high hopes for them. <sighs> All right. That has been it for Warhammer Fest. It was six days of Warhammer news. So there's not going to be any news tomorrow. We're, we're done. We've got it all covered and everything. So we'll be back next week and everything for more news. There will also not be a painting video on Monday. I'm giving myself a little bit of a break just because of the filming schedule this week. Now there will still be a video up Monday. We're just going to put up a compilation of the best of Warhammer Fest from the news this week. So be looking forward to that. I have been Angela. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being with me through this Warhammer Fest adventure. And I'll see you guys next week for some more videos. I've been Angela. You've been watching Hobbit Night. See you next time.